Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a pretty cool one for you guys. We're gonna be taking a look at the Air Gradient Outdoor Air Quality Sensor. Now, if you already saw our other video, we reviewed their Indoor Air Quality Sensor. That video is really cool. You're gonna to wanna to check that one out after this one, which I will have it linked down below, but this is their Outdoor Sensor, which they kindly sent out free for review. So big thank you and shout out to Air Gradient. Let's go ahead and get into this. You guys can see they are committed to sustainability. So uh, their packaging and everything is optimized for minimal environmental impact, basic cardboard box, but that's just fine because you're just gonna open it and throw it away anyway. So let's go ahead, crack this open and see what we've got inside. We have a thank you card from the CEO himself. Very nice. This has the instructions on how to set it up. Looks like we also have the device itself right here, which we will take a look at in just a moment. We also have uh, a little card that tells us which model it is. And that is nice to see, just like the other one. And at the bottom here, it looks like we have, okay, we've got these little metal twist ties as well as a USB-A to USB-C cable. Very cool. We can set this all off to the side. Let's take a look at the star of the show. So here it is, guys. Very interesting design. It is very basic and unassuming, which is exactly what you want when you're placing something outside. You can see on the bottom here, it looks like we've got a little LED. We've got a USB-C port right there. And then on the back here, I can't really show you much because there's a bunch of codes and serial numbers, but you guys can see this is where you mount it uh, to whatever you'd like. And it looks like it will be very easy to do so. Let's go ahead and get this thing connected to the internet. All right, so the bottom light is now flashing. This is super long cable, which I definitely enjoy. Now, once this thing is uh, going here, I'm gonna go ahead and scan the QR code on the back that says for Wi-Fi, and we're gonna connect to the hotspot that this thing creates. All right, now it has created its own Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna click on that on my iPhone right now. It's just another Wi-Fi network and it's going to log me in to this device. And I'm gonna go ahead and configure the Wi-Fi right now. And it looks like I am in, this light has stopped flashing and we are just waiting on the phone right now. It is loading and I think we are good. Now I'm going to scan the other code that's on the back that says to dashboard, and that's gonna add this device straight to our dashboard. All right, it took a minute there and a couple scans, but I am now on this page to add this device to my dashboard, so let's do that right now. And there we go, just like that, I have it added straight to my dashboard, and this is going to start collecting data and transmitting it straight to the cloud right here to this dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead, see if it transferred anything, not quite yet, but it does look like it had a ping. So we're gonna give it just a minute here and just gather a little bit of data before we go to the next part of this video. All right, guys, looks like this is starting to update. So you guys can see here, this is for the outdoor air quality, which is from this device itself. And if I scroll on down here, you can see it is already populating with some data here, which I can of course click on. There's not gonna be much here right now, but in the future, when I come back to the same video, which you guys will see in just about like probably 30 seconds, I'm going to go over all of the data that we've collected over the past one to four weeks, and we are going to do a comprehensive analysis of it and review, and we will let you know if this thing is worth it. So far, I am really liking what I'm seeing, the ease of use, it's all on the web, but we shall see. So I'm going to see you guys in just a bit. I'm gonna smush it all into this video. We got the unboxing setup and then the full month long review all in this video. So stay tuned and we will be right back. All right guys, we are back and I have to say, this has been a long time coming. This is one of the longest amounts of time that I have spent trying out a product. Uh, I think it's been since March, mid-March. So three and a half, almost four months coming up on uh, for testing out these Air Gradient products. I wanted to make sure I fully understood everything about these, or at least as much as possible. So just to recap, I have the indoor and the outdoor module set up and I've been really enjoying these. Now, mostly I look at uh, the outdoor one a lot more than the indoor just because I have so many other indoor sensors. But here is the dashboard. So I'm gonna put up some pictures of how I kind of mounted these devices. I have one outside on my deck in the back, and I also have one uh, in my office that I kind of use to periodically take a look at. This is the dashboard that you guys would see if you purchase one of these and you look at your dashboard online. First of all, you can see it has these good to know items. So you can click on these, kind of read through it. You can also dismiss it if you don't like it or if you're done with it. Up here in the top right, you can switch a couple of quick settings, but I don't really know exactly why they're up here. Uh, those could be definitely moved somewhere else uh, because this looks more like a settings panel for an account. The hamburger menu over here kind of gets you to your main hub. So it's got your name, what level you are. So I'm premium just because I have these. I think everyone automatically gets that, uh, at least for now. Dashboard analytics, data export, user profile, support, place, locations, hardware, user permissions, and connect a monitor course you can sign out as well. Now these air quality monitors do work with Home Assistant if you have them updated. You can look into that if you use Home Assistant. I personally don't right now. 
uh, Achim or Akim, not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, I've been working with him. I think he's the owner of Air Gradient and he has been super helpful. Anytime I had a question, he answered it pretty quickly. Uh, and he seems very, very passionate about the air quality monitoring, which is great. Doesn't seem like it's necessarily financially motivated like other companies. Not going to name any names here, but you know who you are. Uh, but this air gradient seems to be, how do you say, I guess just more in tune with the people and actually cares about improving air quality or at least helping people understand that air quality really matters, whether it's indoor or outdoor. Now we have a map here on their website that you guys can take a peek at as well. Now there's not a ton of data on here. You guys can see kind of how it looks, but as more people buy these and uh, install them, it should get a little bit better uh, over time. So if I scroll down here, let's just go down and we can take a look at other people's here. I believe, I'm not sure if I can change this into Fahrenheit from here, but this is kind of what it looks like. And yeah, you can scroll around on the map, take a look, uh, see what's going on. But I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and look at my chart. So here is what it kind of looks like. I've got mine set to the last eight hours, five minutes, but you can drill down to pretty much anything you want here. Uh, so if I just wanna look at the 30 day mark, this is kind of you know giving you a top down view, 90 days even. Uh, you guys can see a lot more data uh, and which days were you know worse or better now i will say my data is a little bit skewed right now this is because of a little bonfire uh, pit that we've got this wind sometimes blows the smoke towards this which is obviously not ideal because this is not really what it's like out there these are usually recommended to be placed away from outdoor grills and stuff like that but given that this thing it's not solar or anything it has to have power which is one of the downsides uh, you know this is just the way it is so you know, I can mentally just block this out, but if this was a public unit, they might get freaked out. Uh, so currently this stuff is private and I keep it that way. Here is the hourly. So you can see it's normally pretty good. Definitely changes throughout the day. I think a lot of these higher values, I don't know if it's actually truly higher particle values or if it's just like moisture in the air. I know that can sometimes mess these up, but this is definitely from the bonfire right here. Anyways, here you can see the inside location, particle, uh, particulate matter around seven right now, which is fantastic. That's very good. Uh, 455 for the CO2 inside, which is very low, actually a little too low uh, because I've got some other meters that are reading a little higher than this one. This one's always been quite low, not entirely sure why, but that's just the way it is. I did update all of these, which is another thing. So this one of the reasons that I waited so long for this video, mine were actually stuck on older firmware. I had to manually update them myself with a cable, now that they're on the latest firmware, Air Gradient can actually push out the updates over the air now. So I don't have to keep plugging them in, which is fantastic. It's so much nicer. The app updates can just come through. I almost wish there was a setting. I don't think there is one for uh, manually allowing updates. So let's just say I wanted to download the update, but not necessarily install it right away or something like that, where I was given the option to update. I think that might be a next level of granularity for users. But I understand Air Gradient wants everyone to be on the latest and greatest. So I understand that they've done it the way they've done it. Now, if we scroll all the way down, we've got the outdoor locations as well as indoor. So if you have multiple sensors, wherever they are, you can see them here and in a nice compact form. Of course, if I click this little button here, I can edit the location or show monitor information. So if I click show monitor information, it's just going to show me like serial number and firmware version that it's on. Like I said, these are both up to date all the way. 3.1.4, I believe that's what it is. And yeah, so here we can see a bunch. We can see the PM 2.5, the 0.3, the PM 1, PM 10, CO2, temp, relative humidity, TVOX, NOx, and last update. And these are live updating, which is fantastic. This dashboard is super useful. I wish it was a little better on mobile, but if you have an iPad or a MacBook, it looks way better. And what's really cool is you can click these little panels here and you can add a ton of more stuff. So if you want the group name, R2, last 24 hours, RMSE, you can also add the heat, TVOC, IND30, and as well as Wi-Fi status. So if you want to see, you know, how the Wi-Fi is doing and make sure that it is strong, you can do that right there. So let's go ahead and just add these here. And there we go. PM reduction, will add that as well. So that is kind of what it looks like with everything in there. All my readings look very good right now, at least to me, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the devices here in just a second. I wanted to give you a very thorough overview of this dashboard and get you guys familiarized with it because this is where you're going to get all your information. The outdoor unit does not have a screen. The indoor unit does have a screen. Uh, but again, if depending on where you put it, you might not always see the screen. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now you got analytics here. Let's just add, uh, let's do, let's do CO2 and we'll do, let's do 24 hours. And let's just do indoor or inside. And let's see. So here is what the inside last 24 hours CO2 has been. 
uh, you can kind of see where it jumps up and where it falls, especially when the AC is on full blast, uh, cooling off the house, especially at night. I sleep way better if the temperature is around like 66 to 68 Fahrenheit. Uh, so I definitely crank the AC up uh, during those times to keep it as cool as possible. Now, if I go to, let's just go to, where is it at? Temperature. And yeah, at night it just drops to, gosh, how far? 65, gets up to, unfortunately 72, but it goes right back down. So that's just the way it is at this house. Let's go ahead and do outside here and we can put that right on top of it. So you can kind of see how the outside temperature correlates to the inside. And it's pretty interesting. We can also go ahead and take a look at PM 2.5 because that is something that people look at quite a bit. And wow, that went crazy high and then it went down. That was for indoors, probably when I was frying up some bacon or something like that because that does spike it just for a minute. But at this particular house where this is at, I've got an ionizer and all kinds of other things in the air. So you can see generally it is a very, very clean and no issues there at all. CO2, again, I trust the outside more than I do the inside, at least for this unit, just because I've got some other units that seem to be a little more accurate for CO2. Don't really understand why. TVOC is interesting because uh, VOCs can come from anything. They can come from vinyl flooring, carpet, stuff like that. Uh, and I did have a lot of that redone at this particular house where this one is installed. It's been interesting to see that. That's another reason why I waited so long for this full review, because I wanted to see what would happen. But anyways, this is of course just within the last 24 hours, but I can switch it to anything. If I wanna see the last seven days, I can do that. I can see the CO2, I can see the temperature, I can sort by anything that I want. And if I had more of these units, I could just add them right here at more locations. Boom, just add them to the graph and take a look at everything, see how it goes. So one thing I do wanna mention, I, I was having some issues at the beginning. Uh, if the sun hits the outdoor unit, uh, or if, since it's attached to a wall that's dark, colored, uh, it can generate extra heat and be a little bit, a little bit wrong. Let's just say that, especially during the springtime when it's like 70 degrees outside, this thing will read sometimes 80, 80 something, just because unfortunately it's hot from the wall and it just radiates up. Now I have a weather station that mitigates that. This thing can't quite do that. I think because it's again, mounted to a wall, the relative humidity and the temperature are sometimes wrong for the outside. And that's why I have a couple different weather stations out there that are all more accurate. Anyways, that's the analytics board. I really like this one. You can of course refresh it, get most up-to-date information, but let me go ahead and quickly talk about hardware. So the outdoor unit, like I said, temperature, humidity sometimes is wrong, but I really want to stress that if this thing was solar, it would be miles better. The reason being, I have a very limited place where I can mount this, unfortunately, due to power restrictions, cables are, and you know, not wanting to get electrocuted and all that stuff. So I've got mine set up very conservatively, but I've got this set up for air quality, not for temperature and stuff. If you care more about the temperature and whatever, I recommend just getting a weather station instead. This is more for the air quality outside. So I don't care if the temperature and stuff's a little bit off. That's just me. But if this was solar, I could have placed it further out away, further from the house, not next to the house where it's gonna generate heat there and further away from the bonfire and further away from the grill. Overall, I think that you know, if solar was a possibility, it would be a little better. Now, is that coming down the line? I don't know. Would it be cool? Absolutely. I think battery backup would be great on both of these as well, if it was possible. But I know these are power hungry devices, relatively speaking, and to get the most accurate data, sometimes you gotta do more counts and more counts means more power. So maybe solar is not in the cards. I don't know, I don't make these things, but that's just my quick little rant about power. Data export, if you want, you can export straight to a CSV. That's another thing about Air Gradient. You pretty much own your own data. With others, you know, if you read their privacy policy, it's kind of like, oh, all your data that you get is their property kind of thing, and you know, they can use it. Air Gradient has a totally different approach. It's your data. If you want to export it, go for it. Uh, it is what it is. If you want to share it with them and make it public, go for it. Something else that's cool here, if I click on plan, that'll just show my you know personal stuff. You don't need to see that, but you can also subscribe to alarm. So if I hit alarm settings here, I can go ahead and add uh, a new alarm. If I want to be notified of a certain thing. So let's just say uh, all inside locations, uh, let's measure CO2 and let's do is greater than, and let's say a thousand or let's do 999. So if my CO2 indoors goes above 99, it's going to activate and it's going to immediately give me an alert. That's really cool. Uh, I don't personally use any of these because I monitor these you know, myself all the time. But if I subscribe to this alarm, it will give me alerts. I can also notify when returned to normal. This is super powerful stuff that a lot of others don't have. Uh, and I really like that they give you this option and it's included. This is something that definitely differentiates this from others. But again, I'm going to delete this just because 
I don't use that. I don't need it right now. In the future, I might though. General play settings, you guys can kind of mess with these if you want. You can switch some of these index learning and stuff. I mean, you can switch a lot of things within their website here. LED and display, so you can display the PM or the CO2 or LEDs off for the indoor ones. You can change the light values. So I've got mine set to 10% at night, just so it's not super bright. But you guys, of course, can change that. But I think it looks really good at night when it's dim. And it's even got this option right here to switch off the display from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. every night to extend it. Wish we could change that a little bit. Maybe if we could change it to like 2 a.m. to 5 or 6 a.m., that'd be even better. Activity settings, MQTT, and API access right there. And of course, you've got groups and you can add more groups if you want and use those as you please. Now, locations doesn't show too much, just, you know, my locations as well as hardware that's just going to show serial number and stuff the user of course is my user account and then connect the monitor if you want or sign out now something that's cool here i've got this covering up my user account but you can add new users you can get daily weekly reports offline monitor notifications i actually used to get these daily weekly reports but uh, i turned those off just because uh, the format wasn't the best in my uh, email on mobile so i found that i wasn't really looking at them very much but some people might definitely look at that so it's an option. Offline monitor notifications, very important. So I know if something goes offline, especially for the outdoor unit, now that the LEDs are off by default, uh, that was an update that they did. It was kind of questionable, but I don't know that you can turn those back on yet. They're off by default. It's fine, it's cool. I'm used to it now. Uh, as long as I get offline notifications, it's all good. Uh, data export is on and general admin is also turned on for this account because this is my main account. I could also give someone else access to this if I want them to see it, which is fantastic to have, especially if this is for a business or maybe you've got a bunch of people in your house that you want to be able to see it. This is clutch and very nice to have. So anyways, that has been a very quick overview, but I think that these are incredibly powerful devices uh, if more people start to use them, uh, because first of all, knowing your air quality is paramount to your health, in my opinion. I think that knowing what's in the air, what you're breathing, you know, maybe you might not be able to change the outdoor air right now, but maybe it'll encourage you to go inside for a little bit while it's bad out. It's bad inside to go outside sometimes and just tweak little things to get your air quality as good as possible. Like I said, CO2 was the only major disappointment with this. Uh, it's very similar to other monitors that I've used where it's just incredibly low. Like it's not 454 inside right now. It's just not. I, that's outdoor air. If I had to guess, it's probably close to actually around 600 indoors, but I mostly use this for the PM 2.5. Uh, that's really what I like to use this for to see the indoor air quality of that. And then this, I usually just add about 100 to 150 to it. And with that said, the outdoor one is usually pretty close to accurate. 427 is about the ambient uh, CO2 outdoors. Uh, so that seems pretty accurate to me. Anyways, I got to give a big thank you and shout out to Air Gradient for sending these uh, two air quality units out free for review. This was a very long test, guys. I mean, this has been months in the making. I hope it was helpful for you guys. I do highly recommend these units. I like that these are more open source than others. I like that the owner actually gives a shit, to be honest. He seems to really care. I like that. It's refreshing to see that. And he's always making improvements to these with software updates and listening to user feedback. That is something that I can't say for other companies. So very well done to Air Gradient. Hats off to them. If you're looking for an air quality monitor, Definitely check these ones out first. Um, just take a look at their website, see if they have what you want. Of course, there's others. Uh, if you want CO2 only, like if that's the main thing, we've done reviews on our channel of some other good ones. I'm not gonna name drop them here, but you can check out our channel. We've done a lot of different reviews. If you're looking for overall air quality, including PM 2.5, stuff like that, definitely check out Air Gradient. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for this one. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.